gentlemen, please welcome the recipient of the 2014 Stockholm Achievement Award, actress Uma Thurman. Hi. What a warm welcome. Welcome to the Stockholm Film Festival. Um, is this your first time in Sweden? No, no, it's not my first time in Sweden, but that was incredibly kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, what are your impressions about Sweden? My impressions? Yeah. Too vast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to take it slow. Yeah. Uh, you have a Swedish background, right? I do, yes. Yeah. I, I, I am half Swedish. And my half mother is here tonight. Ah, yay! <laughs> and your grandmother is a statue in the city of Smygehuk, actually. There, yes, that's true. <laughs> yes, um, and they're developing a movie about the sculpture, who mm -hmm. did that sculpture. Mm -hmm. So maybe your grandmother will be a character in that movie. Well, we'll all have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever she was up to. <laughs> Um, do you know any Swedish? Um, no, sadly, I, I, it would be embarrassing to my mother for me to say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I think she said about you that you inherited the family's restless legs. Is that true? <laughs> we can ask her. <laughs> but in terms that you've been uh, moving a lot and um, searching for different kind of careers and paths and and stuff like that, but, um, and I know that you started very early with acting. Mm -hmm. uh, what drew you to acting in the first place? You know, I, I am not sure, except that I, I loved it from a very, very young age. Um, I wonder, a, from the very first time I was able to be involved in the first school play, mm -hmm. it, it was sort of, I was more comfortable as a performer saying, acting out something than I actually was myself around other children. And I think it was somehow, it was the right vehicle for me to, um, just to feel able to express myself. Yeah. Without really expressing myself, <laughs> <laughs> as Be actors do. Because I have this theory that you either become an actress if you're really shy or really extrovert. I probably was the first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then you did uh, one of your first leads when you were 16. Yes. And that followed with work with uh, Terry Gilliam mm -hmm. in The Adventures of Baron Munchausen mm -hmm. and what is to be considered as your big breakthrough in Stephen Freer's Dangerous Liaisons. Mm -hmm. um, what wo were those first acting experiences like for you? Well, you know, I actually, I, was, I feel very fortunate. I remember um, Norma Heyman, who is the producer on Les Liaisons Dangereuses, who said, you have no idea how lucky you are, my dear. It's all downhill from here. Um, <laughs> to get to work with uh, such wonderful actors. And, and I, I, I guess, I'm, I'm not a guess, I'm certain. I've been very, very fortunate to um, have been you know, a director's actor from a very early time. You know, when I was from the beginning, you know, starting at a very young age, it was the time where the director was, it still is, but it was very much a director-centered mm. universe and cinema was king. Um, and director was the king of the kings. Um, and that was something that uh, shaped me yeah. very much, that it was simply who the director was, not so much what the part was. Um, it was not a sort of, it was never a me-centered uh, choice. It would be to try to be part of working with incredible, great, artists and director writers and auteurs and and that kind of guided me from the beginning yeah did you feel protected by the directors well sometimes <laughs> um mostly yes i feel very i was very spoiled you know uh, terry gilliam stephen frears john borman mm -hmm. um all early directors in my life that i was blessed to work with um it was i was very indulged you know yeah. to get to work with with people like that Mm. at a time that they were truly all of them in, in great stride with their work. But did you have a, any actor mentors or did you kind of find your own path in, in terms of technique and...? Um, 
Well, all the actors I worked with were, were mentors to me. Um, they were all exceptional. I mean, they, some of it was funny. I remember in a scene from Dangerous Liaison, I was uh, sort of on the floor in front of Glenn Close, just barely 18 years old, and in a, a scene where I was plaintively, you know, calling out to her. And, I, and in between takes, I said, do you have any suggestions? What, what can I do? What can I do? <laughs> and she looked at me very severely, and I love her to this day, and she said, try less hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that was a very good note, yeah. actually. Extraordinarily, the hardest thing to do is to try less hard, right, um, <laughs> in life. But yeah. um, you have to try. You try as much as you try. It's, uh, we all have a kind of a DNA imprint of how hard we try in life. I think it's as hard to escape as your own face. Yeah. But uh, are you a method actor, or do you base it more on technique? I studied method acting when I was a young person, um, and it's interesting. I my I had a coach who I worked with for many years in the beginning, and I sort of found my own sort of passage, and it changed over time, and it does. Um, it was not. I would certainly not blame any acting teacher for my career um, <laughs> so but I, you know for me it was I very much adapted how to approach to each character to the screenplay to the director um, it was very important to me to truly belong to a director in 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 as far as how to pitch a performance yeah. um, no two are the same and you know, and, and truly to belong to the writing, almost in each time in original manner. So yes, there are sort of like there are patterns to the tradition of how to go about something. Yeah. But because I wanted to do comedy and I wanted to do try every genre of filmmaking and um, you know noir and uh, drama and comedy and 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 so on, I, I I always felt like I had to sort of throw away the rules of whatever worked for me last time and put everything I had available to trying something new. Oh. So your dream role is like the opposite of what you just did? That was sort of if, how I did spend a lot of my career was, you know, this was, there was a silly term uh, when I was a young actress called being pigeonholed. I don't know mm -hmm. if you, uh, it's nothing dirty. Um, it's like typecast. But being typecast, no. yeah. yes. And um, so, you know, especially as a sort of young woman, trying to keep from being typecast and prevent, you know, to not to cash in any particular type of character that people wanted you to play. Mm. Instead, to try so hard to do everything. And, you know, certainly during my sort of arc as a performer, it was nothing but constant, it's always like, like life, you know, it's constant resistance, you know. Oh, she can't do comedy. She's not funny. She can't do comedy. Oh, she, you, you, you can't do action. They'll be ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, I agreed with that thoroughly. <laughs> um, uh, and never more than the days and hours I spent trying. But, um, uh, uh, so, you know, so it basically, yes, it was always kind of um, being willing to throw all babies out with all bath water. Yeah. Because uh, I saw one of your first interviews, and I think it was for Dangerous Liaisons, mm -hmm. and the male oh reporter <laughs> said to you, oh, I, I didn't know if I should ask you about your nudity scenes. And you responded, no, you wouldn't want to be unique, would you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be unique. Unique, <laughs> would you? And that was such a great answer to kind of I stupid must have been question. I really tired, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where did you get you know, that kind of courage from when we are so young to answer back to a journalist like that? Well, you know, journalists can really wear you out. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I must have been asked 500 times that day or something that finally I, I, I started <laughs> to tell the truth, um, at least about the experience of the question. Um, but I don't know. Look, you know, as my mother would say, life is not for sissies, you know. Yeah. So... <laughs> it's, uh, you, you either have courage or you go home. Yeah, you need to face things head on. Eventually, I mean, we, I, look, I for one subscribe to trying to avoid conflict at all costs, but eventually, <laughs> eventually sometimes you have to deal with things. Yeah, 
and I, I hear that you have great respect for directors and for writing. Mm -hmm. um, on what basis do you choose your projects? Those two criterion, yeah. mainly, um, for the most part. I mean, there have been times in my life where I wanted, you know, I say I was oppositional, like I didn't want to do another action thing just because I could. Mm. I'm so contradictory, you know, it's been a big problem for me, <laughs> um, being arbitrarily, foolishly contrarian. But um, uh, so sometimes it's sort of about what, trying just sort of just be, you know, to, to sort of challenge whatever you did last time. But mainly, um, you know, when you read a piece of writing, it's like reading a wonderful poem, you know, or one that you love, that you're going to like. You know, you, you read it and the images come into your mind and they, and they start to sort of carve themselves into your spirit. And that's kind of how I would describe the times I've been lucky enough to read a part that is beautifully articulated, a beautifully articulated human being, or perhaps very funny, or, um, you know, is that it's, it sort of starts to, it's like, it, it, it's like lighting a flame to a candle, so illuminating something that you didn't realize you feel so much about. And that's sort of the best time mm. of the best choices yeah. are special like that. But do you have so much respect for the script that you don't change your lines that much, or it doesn't depend? I would it try depend? not to. Yeah, I have a funny little saying about that. In, in my experience, I, I've not. Well, let me say, I've been unlucky not to have had working environments where great improvisation took place, um, which I know can happen, and I would love to see that happen. <laughs> but oftentimes, I've been on uh, in situations where actors go to improvise, and all they do is curse. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, okay, there's improvisation over. Can we go back to the script? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the director doesn't have a script, so he wants you to do it for him. So, <laughs> Well, that, well. Maybe that could happen as well, yeah. <laughs> well, then it's everybody's fault. Yes. There's a famous line producer that said uh, once about filming, if there's a problem, it happened in pre-production. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what defines a great director for you? Well, there are a number of them. Um, I, I would give them the due credit of being somewhat indefinable, actually, to tell mm. you the truth. Because, um, you know, it's something interesting, actually, that I have thought about, which is the one funny thing about directors, is that actors see many directors, and directors see many actors, but directors never really see other directors yeah. directing. <laughs> so they're actually often, very often, not always, there are probably exceptions, but uh, uh, it's something I've noticed over the years and with friends and, and, and colleagues and that oftentimes that they don't really, they live in a, they have a very private um, experience. Mm. Um, they're not comparing themselves except in the final product necessarily to the process of other directors, yeah. you know, with some exceptions. So I've, I've noticed that uh, a wide, vast difference in the technique of different directors. Um, but mostly, you know, I have a soft spot for great writer-directors um, who doesn't. Uh, mm. Because there's something very personal they're, they're seeking to express, you know, yeah. oftentimes. And um, it's interesting to see. Yeah, and, and that they've managed to keep their visions intact through the whole process. And maybe that's the secluded part. Well, they and they to have to be experts own. in everything. You know, so <laughs> people come to the poor director and they're like, do you like this collar and how about this bead? And, and if I say it like that, you know, like they're like, yes, no, yes, no. You know, and they have to make decisions all the time. It's like they're architects, you know, on a, on a, but on a very immediate, ephemeral medium, you know, that is rushing away from them yeah. all the time. Um, they never have enough time. They never have the time they deserve. But um, what was it? Someone, I think it was a director, said to me that um, the director is like groundwater, you know, that, that, that has to cover a massive terrain um, and saturate it sufficiently, whereas an actor is like well water. Uh -huh. They have to cover very little terrain, but they <laughs> must do it very deeply. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. I thought that was a neat image. Yeah, and I think there was one director that said that uh, when he sees his movies afterwards and see the whole final product, 
uh, sometimes it's just what you thought it was going to be. You know, the sum is equal its part. But sometimes there has been this magical little puzzle piece added, and you don't know what it is, but the movie is magic. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that like when you saw a movie that you've been in afterwards? Yes, I, yeah. I've, been, I've been pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And that's the magic of movies, I guess, that you never know. I think it's just magic. <laughs> it's just <straight laughs> Pure magic. Straight magic. Yeah. Um, and I know that you also produced. I have done. And uh, Hysterical Blindness mm -hmm. was the TV series that you both produced mm -hmm. and acted in. Was it Telemovie? Telemovie, yeah. yeah. And you actually got a Golden Globe Award for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it was partly based, because you were in charge of the whole process as a producer also, that you got to play this amazing part and character as well, mm. that responded to you know, the Golden Globe uh, jury? Oh, well, I don't know about what they responded to, but it's certainly developing. It was that was a play that I had seen off, off, off Broadway the last night before it closed, and it was so beautiful. And I, um, I then d developed it, and I was trying to get it produced with another actress, actually, um, and I couldn't. And uh, a friend of mine who was producing with me said, "Well, why don't you play it?" Um, and it was, well, no one wants, no one says, everyone says no one would see me in this role. And, but I, meanwhile, of course, I had hand-tailored this role to be brilliant for another actress. <laughs> um, so I had thought through the entire process. I guess it's like the greatest form of rehearsal you could have. Mm -hmm. It would be to participate in developing a piece of material. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you go, you go in, in deep into the engineering of the, the, of the story and of the meaning of it and of the character. And fight for the characters the whole way through. Yes, and mm. go inside all of them, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, this is a hard question to answer, I know, but um, which part would you say has evolved you most as an actress? Hmm. Um, you know, each in their own way. Yeah. So it's not possible so much to answer because sometimes you learn more from where you struggle most, and perhaps you don't succeed there, but your effort in failure is what has t in armed you to succeed somewhere else. Yeah. So for me, it, there's no sort of obvious example of uh, some great moment that was sort of perfect, but um, I, it's just an incredibly long journey, you yeah. know? Um, cause I thought you were going to say the bride, but <laughs> well, that was a wonder. That was an amazing, triumphant sort of experience. Yeah, uh, but of course, one director that you worked most extensively with is Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember the first time when you met him? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, we met for dinner at the Ivy. Yeah. Which is a restaurant in in Los Angeles. And what were your first impressions of him? You know, Quentin is exactly like if you, I'm sure everyone in this room has seen him, and he's, you know, full of life. Yeah. And uh, there's and something I, wrong with the. Are we having a space invasion? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, he's, he's an amazing, amazing personage, you know, he's an incredible, sort of brilliant person. Yeah. And was it for the part of Mia Wallace, or were mm -hmm. you just yes, having a was, meeting? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because Pulp Fiction was first considered kind of like an indie project, right? It was an indie project, yeah. yeah. It was a small, independent film. Uh, it was made for $9 million, yeah. I think. That was the cost of it, uh, which, you know, is not nothing. Uh, but it was not, a, you know, it was not uh, exorbitant. No. So what made you want to play Mia Wallace? Him, he, he did. Well, also the screenplay was sort of just so idiosyncratic and unusual, and uh, the you know the thinking involved in the the speech. You know, he has an incredible ability to sort of channel voices into his characters, mm. and it's I don't know how he knows so much about everything. <laughs> <laughs> at least that concocts itself into these people and these original worlds that he that he builds. Yeah, because one of the hardest things that you can do as an actor is 
I think, is to do dancing scenes because they are so awkward and in front of a crew. And it's so true. Yeah, and I have to drink glasses of wine before because, you know, to be able to do it. You know, maybe you should and not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're all going to know what I'm going to ask now, but you had to go up and twist with <coughs> one of the greatest dancers in Hollywood, mm -hmm. Mr. John Travolta. Yes. What was that like for you? It was very nerve-wracking. <laughs> you know, Did you drink wine? No, I didn't drink <laughs> any wine. Um, I didn't drink any wine, but uh, you know, I find that, that it w I feel so completely miserable and uncomfortable until something starts. And then, hopefully, I lose myself. Mm. And I've been, I've, been, I've been praying for that and having it mostly you know, happen for many, many years. But it's, it's crazy. It's like it, it, it doesn't take away the anxiety beforehand mm. of, of, you know, of fear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was desperate not to do that <laughs> dance scene. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't want to see me dancing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can we just do something about this? I'm tall, I'm awkward, <laughs> I have big feet. Uh, please. And he filmed your feet <laughs> very closely also. <laughs> well, yes, there, there's been much made of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but was it rehearsed or was it improvised? It was planned. Okay. Um, these dances are um, sort of, they were 50s, you know, I guess 50s and 40s and 60s, kind of like, you know, uh, I guess like we haven't had much in, in the recent uh, decades except like the Morena, right? Macarena? <laughs> I mean, like, the, you know, those days that people really used to dance and these, you know, they, they all had names, you know, the swimmer and the Batman and, you know, um, no, the swimmer was this one, and the diver. But um, so John and, and John, of course, knows all of them. John yeah. is actually incredibly, unbelievably disciplined and studious. And he had, I think he, to do Saturday Night Live, I think he said he trained for six months or a year to learn how to disco dance. Um, so, oh, wow, and wow. boy, did he, right? Learn <laughs> disco dance. But, um, uh, so anyway, so he knew all of them, and and, uh, and and Quentin, of course, knew much of many of them. The collector of all things curious, Quentin. Um, and uh, so that we sort of had a plan. You know, they're gonna, we'll call out that you know, do the Batman, you know, do the swimmer, and you know. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna go like that. <laughs> um, and, um, did you copy him, or did you like? copy it right now. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Um, to do it, you have to copy it. Yeah. It's a dance. It's a move. Um, but uh, so then they we would just call them, he would call them out from off camera and we would sort of transition, you know, so the uh -huh. characters were sort of challenging each other to, you know, do you know, like almost like, you know, a duo. do you know this one, do you yeah. know this one, like, and, and they were falling, falling. Um, so that, that was that. Yeah. Um, you must be very pleased afterwards. Uh, yeah. Isn't that why you want to do like <laughs> awful things, scary things? It, it's because of the feeling no, it's afterwards. Actually, yeah. Yes, I remember that I didn't want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> actually, they showed some clips here of um, the producers, which I did. Uh, yeah, when you play played a Swede. Was I played Mel, Bro Mel Brooks's stereotypical Swede in person? <laughs> and I would be like, do you think we should tone it down? Nope. Nope. It's not really realistic. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's how it is. Um, Did you d get a dialect code from from your mother to? No, no, my mother doesn't speak like this. Okay. <laughs> no one here speaks like no, this. No, he doesn't. No, yeah. Only in Mel Brooks's <laughs> mind, this is how the bombshell speaks to him in his mind, um, in, in his fantasies. Um, but the, God bless a good humorist who can stay true to a fantasy. <laughs> but um, no, what, it was because it had been a, a Broadway play. Um, it was very much kind of understood. And it was a lot of fun, I have to say. But I got to live out my dream to be Ginger Rogers in that in that movie. So yeah, they it had, was they one, had of, had my, a lot one of, of my great dreams. Well. Yeah, yeah, I think secretly, and I, it was a career I never could have, it doesn't exist anymore, but my secret secret fantasy would have probably been to be Doris Day. <laughs> Nobody would know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, see, somewhere I would just love to live, spend my life in pillow talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, if we go back to talking about scripts and mm -hmm. about dialogue, uh, Tarantino's dialogue is very precise. Sure is. <laughs> is that freeing as an actress to 
deliver or can you feel kind of trapped? Well, I'm maybe strange, but I find precision to be the only place of peace. Yeah. You know, it, it can give me chaos and I, and, and I can't stand it. I, I actually, the more clear and um, the more I feel I can grasp something, the more I feel I, you know, I guess it's to understand my task and execute it, you know, yeah. like a little dog. <laughs> can, I, can I grab that ball and, and bring it back to you? Please, just, I'd like to know how to do it. Um, so I guess, yeah, I thrive on, I thrive on, on clarity and precision. But you have uh, writing credits for Kill Bill. Well, with he gave me an initial. I'm an initial. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that process? Well, that, that was somewhat to do with the, that the, the concept of the character um, was born in a conversation between us um, after work on Pulp Fiction, you know, 10 years before. And, you know, I don't remember, and I, I mean, I may, may have helped name the character. And the, the, he was actually explaining genre films to me because as much as I was a passionate viewer and actress, I never really knew enough about movies. And so of course he always found this charming and ironic. Um, and he was telling me what, what grindhouse cinema was and, and, and what, that there was something called revenge movies. Uh, I didn't know, it's like, apparently there's a, you probably, you're all film people, but like, <laughs> women in prison is a genre. Um, who knew, it still sounds weird to me, but um, <laughs> there's, some people know they're women in prison movies and, and they in fact set out to make a women in prison movie. And it's been a while since we've seen one, isn't it? Um, I guess Lady Gaga made the last one in her video. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so anyway, he was in the middle of uh, explaining this to me, and um, I was agog, astounded <laughs> at um, the, my, my complete ignorance of my field. And so we got going on the idea of doing a revenge movie, and, and so that's why, that, that's how it sort of... And then I, I had the great privilege of being what I call a front line, um, what, I, what I did call until I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> um, uh, when you're on the front lines of reading, you know, when you're working with a writer and, and you, know, you get the phone call and hear the scene, and you know, hand of the pages and hear the scene, and mm. um, that was really remarkable to see his process. Wow! And you gave him points, and well, he used to say one of my great skills was um, what made me so good at it was I didn't say it was good or bad. He could say we would always simply say that it was simply the level of enthusiasm with which I responded. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Um, you know, apparently, uh, because you never want to just, anyone in a creative process, if you've, and I, you know, if you've ever worked with people or had people work with you, if you are the creator, but, you know, to sort of, uh, you never want to, you know, discourage a, a person in a creative process. It doesn't mean everything they do is going to be any good mm. sometimes, but what is, negativity is very unhelpful. Yeah. In fact, in life. I think it's very unhelpful. And uh, very in creativity, if you feel judged or if you feel like kind of... Uh, yes, um, and yet there's some way that you can, you have to stay honest with a person because being completely permissive and dishonest is also not helpful. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of way of, of, of being a good sounding board, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Because as the bride, you play this really revengeful hero combined with the vulnerability of a mother who has lost a child, or thinks she has lost a child. Uh, who, what was that dualism like to play? Well, I think I've met lots of vengeful mothers. <laughs> um, I think I've myself been one <laughs> in, in, in reality, in, in several playgrounds, you know. Um, <laughs> Medea. <laughs> I, I restrain myself, but um, let's not play with him anymore. He's not very nice. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think that there's no contradiction in those feelings. Oh. Mothers are by nature protective. Yeah. And life is by nature threatening. And I, I've heard that you did this extensive training regime beforehand when you, you started training for like 
10 hours a day, six days a week, when you were six months pregnant. I didn't have any You're choice. You're a hero. That's no, no, no. Such no I never had to do that. Not when I was <laughs> six months pregnant. It was immediately after I gave birth. Oh, uh, wow. But yeah. because I knew I was going to do it all during my pregnancy, I tried very hard not to explode and gain the 60 pounds that I had, I had gained in my previous pregnancy, and I gained 59. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... Uh, but I, I did a lot. I tried to stay uh, really active, and I knew I had a very serious. Uh, I with every with every bursting seam of my voluminous self, I, I knew I had to come back down off of that mountain, and it was quite a challenge. Yeah, and you shot for like nine months in four different countries. Uh, that's so impressive. Mm. Well, it was that you pulled it, that off. It, it was it was a journey. Yeah. <laughs> I think the audience has some questions also. Um, yes? Did you have to choose a dream film project? What would that be? The question was if I could choose a dream film project, what would it be? Um, I don't know. At this point, I get so worried about cinema that my dream is just to see movies continue to be made. <laughs> um, my dream is that the, sh the, you know, the 90 minute narrative cinematic form. Um, will keep being made and that they won't close the last remaining Kodak film factory that is still making 35 and 75 milli millimeter film um, will stay open. And maybe not everyone knows this, but it's by a thread today. The massive move to, uh, it's not quite the question you're asking, but it's the true answer. Um, <laughs> is the massive move towards video, high def video is which is fantastic for the, how it makes f film making possible for so many people, but the actual medium of, uh, of film is under threat. So my dream is just to see us make it through that passage and for this film to c continue to be made. Not quite your question. <laughs> yes? Um, particular roles that reflected me personally? I don't know. I, I guess all of them. You know, um, I can only think of maybe some that didn't reflect me personally. <laughs> um, but, uh, which was usually not the best choice. But, um, in general, there's a, there's a, I, not, I didn't, I have not chosen perfectly, but, uh, I, I would say that, um, there's a piece of my soul in, 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 in all my right, correct choices. I mean, it was it's, whether it's even just the theme of the overall piece, so something in the humanity of it, something in the humor, or something in the specific woman whom I would choose to play, that, that's how you sort of make, you're always on the line when you make a decision. My pleasure. <laughs> okay, you up there. <laughs> Hello. It's an honor to have you here. Oh, thank you. Um, so my question is, what is your best acting advice? My best acting advice? My best acting advice? Um, be brave. You know, don't be afraid that to be bad. Everybody's bad. You know? Every, you know, you can't do anything interesting unless you slightly risk it. Um, so... You know, I tell myself that, to be honest with you. Um, you know, what is the worst thing that could happen to me? That, that I'll be terrible, which I've done already. Um, so, and I, I'm still here. But, um, so, you know, it's, 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 guess, it's courage and, and somehow just never stop working. Never stop working. You can always find another way. You can always find another way, no matter how discouraging it is, or even just in the actual effort of from take to take or scene to scene or moment to moment, allow yourself to be available and discover what's something true in you. And try, to, try, to escape, try not to be dominated by that horrible self-critical voice that actually only makes you worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, obviously everyone relates to that, I <laughs> see. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
It's very cute. <laughs> uh, we can we can have one last question. Yes. Oh dear! Some of my favorite movies. There's so many. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> the it's hugger, hugger is arriving. <laughs> 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 It's <laughs> a shame, everyone. Yay! <laughs> I have a feeling an aspiring actress, if there's any aspiring directors in the room. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ask you to do a twist with me later. Oh, so. dear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say I've done worse, but, I, but it, that sounds pretty good. Thank you so much Thank for this face so to face. And I'm gonna end actually with, I'm a quote freak. I love quotes. Uh, so I'm of course gonna end with a quote from you. Oh dear. Because you said something very special about your relationship with your samurai s sword in Kill Bill. And it's so great, it, it goes like this. I'm very possessive of my sword. I earned it. I became one with it. It took a long time. I learned a hard way how to handle that thing. My favorite thing was the journey that took me to that sword. And it was the hardest journey you can ever go through. Thank you, Uma Thurman. <laughs> I didn't give you the chance to respond, thank you. <laughs> and I now think now you're going to the award ceremony. Oh, you're going to yeah. kill Bill now, right? Yeah, and the award ceremony first. Oh. You're going to receive your horse. Oh, horse, yes, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't realize. I, I completely lost myself. <laughs> to present the Mathurman with the Stockholm Achievement Award, please welcome actress and rising star nominee, Felice Gantet. Yay! Okay, shall I go over there? Yeah, we can start, yeah. Hello. So I am, of course, very proud and honored to have been given the opportunity to hand over this award. So for me, it's a true joy to just like share the same stage as this personal favorite. You are really an inspirer for me. So I will now read the justification. Oh dear, <laughs> yes, you don't have to be worried, okay? We stood too early. No? <laughs> yeah. So, ever since her earliest roles, Uma Thurman has displayed an ability to portray and project the perfect and fantastical, while giving glimpses of the humanity that lies within. Every performance is exciting and thrilling and ferocious, and a gift to the audience worldwide. The one and only Uma Thurman. Yeah. <laughs> Some Swedish. Uh, very bad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you've heard a lot from me already this evening, um, but I would just like to express my, my, my deepest gratitude. Um, it's so special for me to be here. Um, it's so special to be here with my mother. Welcome home, mother. Oh. <laughs> and. Um, I'm just very moved and touched, and, and I, I hope to spend lots more time here. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, we are coming from Sverige. I'm Blanche Williams. Look, he 
just said to be your friend for a week. You saved his life. That's all I know. All. I have to earn money to feed her. How can I work and take care of her? I have to lie. God damn! God damn!